when Maureen Hancock was just five years old, she discovered her ability to communicate with those in the spirit world. Years later, she is helping others to reconnect with loved ones. In her book, The Medium Next Door, Maureen shares her story and offers insights to understanding dreams, intuition, and grieving. Maureen is a nationally renowned spirit medium and holistic healer and the star of a documentary on Style Network, Psychic in Suburbia. Welcome, Maureen. It's great to have you great with us. Great to be here. You were only five years old. How scary was that for you? It was very scary. Um, I had just gotten out of the hospital. I was in Children's Hospital in Boston with lead paint poisoning, and I was in and out for about three years. And I was in a coma for a bit, and so when I finally got to come home from the hospital, I started seeing all these um, invisible people walking around the house. So I said to one of my siblings, I'm one of nine, who are all these people? And she was like, shh, they'll take you back to the hospital. So <laughs> I turned it off, but um, it, it was a bit scary, so I kind of kept it to myself for a while. But when did you share it with other members of the family? Well, you know, at that point, I did ask questions and would ask my mom, you know, who are these people? And But it wasn't until uh, 1992, I was in a horrific car accident. I fell asleep at the wheel broke most of the bones in my face and my grandmother had just passed away. I didn't need surgery. It was it was one of those divine intervention, miraculous healings. That's when I started to come out with, wow, you know, now I'm hearing voices. Am I losing my mind? What's wrong with me? Um, and then cut to 9-11. And uh, I was litigation manager at Logan Airport, and that is when I finally let the cat out of the bag and started to use this ability to help families affected by 9-11. So that was the start of this crazy journey. But we should tell people that really you have it in your family. Other members of your family have it. Absolutely. Well, um, I'm from a line of legendary Irish mystics. Uh, my grandmother was very intuitive, although extremely Irish Catholic head of the God Squad. And um, my mom, very intuitive. My grandmother's sister was a well-known Irish mystic who did readings and healings. So it runs in the family. I wasn't looking for this. Um, it kind of hit me in the face, I guess, so to speak. And um, so now I'm just trying to embrace it and use it to give back. How are you giving back? Well, I have uh, two nonprofits that are co-founded with others. One is for cancer, so I work a lot with sick children and adults and do a lot of hands-on healing work, such as uh, Reiki, which is a Japanese um, hands-on healing, Shiatsu, acupressure, praying over the sick, and I also talk to families um, and answer their questions about death, and especially if somebody's terminal, uh, people will come right out and ask me, you know, what's it going to be like, and who's going to be there to greet me, and, you know, will I see God, and different questions that we all have, I think. Well, in this book, you really talk about um, the way you communicate with those who have passed, and you like to use the word pass passing yes. and how you communicate with them and you share their message to those who are still living. Mm -hmm. how, how does that all happen? Well, as far as how I connect, yes. do you mean? So I hear a lot of what's coming through. Um, that's called clear audience. So it's sometimes it's fast-moving messages. It's not perfect. Uh, but I'm, I'm hearing voices like, oh, I'm her father, and I get facts. They tell me how they passed, uh, maybe their age, birthdays, how many children they had. And then they give messages of comfort. You know, please tell my daughter that, that I'm okay and I'm at peace and I'm not sick any longer and I'm going to help guide her and then talk about things about um, this person's life, the living person, to help them live the, the fullest life that they can until we're all together again one day. So I hear, I feel, and I see things. All the stories you shared in the book were all positive. All, all, everybody wanted to tell you to tell their loved ones, hey, I'm okay. Is that generally what happens? For me it is. I, I connect on a very high level and my messages are inspirational and loving and come from that place of hope and peace. So I don't tell any bad news, you know, and, and I'm not God. So, um, but they do, they let go of kind of the, the stuff here that with the life lessons and sometimes people say to me, you know, oh, is my mother still upset with me? I'm like, no, you know, that's part of what we're supposed to learn here and then let go of that and, and move on. So yeah, they are all positive messages. Now people approach you, I know you also do private readings, but really, don't people approach you from all over, wherever you are? 
Yes, and, and actually right now, because I'm so busy, um, I dedicate my my time to giving uh, private readings for free for parents who've lost children. I have two wait lists that are um, absolutely full, so uh, right now I'm not taking any new names because I, I work with the newly bereaved for parents, and that's how I want to give back after my sister's son passed suddenly and tragically. That's how I decided to, to use my time, and so I am bombarded from the living and the dead. And sometimes you can't say no, right? Because it just is right there in your face. It's really hard for me. I definitely have discretion. I mean, thankfully, I don't just walk up to somebody, uh, you know, in the supermarket like, hey, guess who's standing behind you? So, and, and that can happen, though, couldn't it, it? It definitely happens. I did have somebody in the supermarket, a living person, who I was looking at produce, tomatoes, and I heard, psst, um, is my brother here? He just passed. And I was like, um... I think I just saw him in the deli. So, and you uh, actually did? I did actually go over and help this woman. Um, I try to keep things light. I'm uh, known as the comedian medium, but um, I'm very serious about my work, but I try to help people celebrate life and the memories. You are serious about your work because you also help people who are looking for missing people. You have a missing persons, what is the organization? It's called for? Mission for the Missing. Yes, Mission for the and, Missing. And uh, co-founded with a private detective. And we actually get calls now from all around the country from um, authorities. I work with a female detective in North Carolina on a number of her missing person cases and um, murders. And basically, I'm just another tool in the toolbox. I don't claim I can solve every case, but I can help them get further in the case mm -hmm. and um, special and bringing home living children. We're running out of time, but just really quickly, the message of your book to everybody who reads this book, what is the message? Um, the message is about uh, finding a way to, to recognize the signs and the many ways that our loved ones are trying to tell us that they're okay, that they're at peace, they're still with us. Um, it can be songs on the radio, coins, feathers, certain birds. And I teach people how to get in touch with their own intuition in the book. We all have it. Excellent. The book, again, is The Medium Next Door, Adventures of a Real-Life Ghost Whisperer. Maureen, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for having me.